The name of this project was a teacher learning and leadership program, which really was a, a very interesting attempt of the ministry and the Ontario Teachers Federation, which is a federation of four teacher unions, to collaborate on a program for experienced teachers who would become the people who would actually provide professional development uh, in their school. And they would, people uh, would need to write a proposal, hopefully get approved, uh, and then have the budget and the wherewithal to actually create professional development, uh, hopefully with another person or a team. The program actually started in 2007, uh, and we are now in the seventh cohort and approximately 120 teachers are involved in each cohort. Um, but because they're teams, um, it turns out to be much more than that. I mean, it's, you know, one person writes the proposal, but you may be talking about four or six people involved in the project itself. An interesting thing about uh, Canada is that they are in the top um, in two areas, top by like top fourth, I would say, in um, students doing well on PISA, um, but also um, the incredible support that they have given um, because the population itself is extraordinarily diverse. Um, immigrants uh, who go to Canada um, most often go to Toronto. So the schools are actually um, full of, all schools, at least in Toronto, are all politically, culturally, and ethnically diverse. And so um, what you get with a success like this is not just a success in professional development, but a serious, <coughs> serious work on um, the equity of all students. It was the policy makers actually collaborating with the people who do the practice. And this, to my knowledge, you know, may be a first, not just in Canada, but a first that we know about uh, in the world, where instead of funding schools or funding districts, you're funding individual teachers to work collaboratively. I had to figure out, you know, this was this new, pro new program and the first um, cohort are people who are coming to this brand new thing, nobody's ever gotten money. And I decided that my job could be twofold. One would be to sort of really get, get a hold of, for the teachers, the fact that this isn't just a project you're working on. You are working on becoming teacher leaders which is a big idea all over the country, not one that actually uh, has actually ever started in quite this way. And since I've studied it and I've been involved with that for a long time, I thought I could actually create a much bigger foundation for the work. The second thing really was to inspire teachers um, by, by this conversation so that they would realize that they were incredibly important and that what they did was not just going to be in their own school or in their classrooms, but in fact it was going to have much larger um, significance uh, in the whole discussion about teacher leadership and professional development. But a big idea that's emerged is lots of people are talking about teacher leadership all over the world. I think people, there's a general sense that teachers teach each other a lot why not make use of this uh, as a, as a uh, strategy? Uh, but in this case, um, I think one of the things um, became clear was that there really are several, lots of different ways to study and learn leadership. Uh, and I, I went back to my own, uh, my own studies where I was trying to understand principals initially uh, and then teachers. And it occurred to me that there really are two hugely different and disparate ways to think about leadership. One of them is literally to teach people everything we know about leadership. And in that case, you go and you get a degree in leadership. 
Another way is to actually try to provide the conditions so that people can learn leadership. And that's exactly what has happened here, is that the conditions turn out to be extremely important. You support people, you respect what they're doing, you give advice, but you don't tell them what to do. You provide many, many different kinds of opportunities for people to work. You encourage them to work with other people and you give them time to do it. And that's exactly what happened here, is people realized that they could get help from the union, but they could also get help from the ministry, and they weren't um, at each other's throats, but in fact, they were friends and colleagues. So the support actually starts right at the beginning when people come to this conference. There are a number of workshops um, basically facilitating the kind of learning that teachers need just to go back to their school with a little bit of money um, and how to, uh, who's available for what kind of help. So there's help on budget, there's help on um, how do you deal with your principal, there's help on how do you deal with a variety of conflicts that clearly, you know, um, come to pass. Uh, how do you work with your team? How do you organize your money and your time? Those are all things that teachers have never done. So there are th um, workshops for people to take advantage of whatever people know so far. For a number of years, um, I w I've been the keynote speaker. <clears throat> and so I'm, I feel like I'm actually part of this project now. Um, and every year I've approached the ministry who handles the money uh, and I've said, look, you know, nobody will believe what you're doing here unless you um, do a little bit of uh, some collection of data and provide some evidence. What we have found is that 95% of the teachers think this is an incredible opportunity uh, and that uh, a number of them, I can't give percentages, but a number of people have said this is absolutely the best learning that they have had since they've become teachers. So there's a, something about this idea that if you provide people with the conditions to do this work and they are responsible with support, there's something quite important about this kind of information for all of us about how teachers learn, period. For sure, how teachers learn to take leadership and even for teacher, how teachers learn how to share the kinds of things that they're learning. One example that I really like is this, is the high school teachers, 10th grade high school civics teachers, where they have a class that every student has to take. Uh, and the teacher, not only, there's a team, but they went and asked people in their own school and their friends in other schools, found out that everybody, all the teachers were saying that the kids were bored with civics. It was totally unconnected to anything they cared about and in basically was not very successful. So they wrote a proposal to change civics. And they ended up actually changing uh, how they connected to students uh, by giving questions that had relevance to civics, but also relevance to students' lives. And in doing so, they've totally changed the way kids are connected to civics. And then wrote about it in such a way that they could share it with other people who are also um, not just in their own board, which is like our district, but in other boards as well. When you trust and respect teachers um, for, for openers, teachers will put out all kinds of energy and excitement uh, and open themselves up to learning. And one of the things I've learned, actually in traveling all over the world, is the countries that do that are also the very same countries where students are doing well, students like school, students want to come to school, and teachers are excited about teaching, whether they are brand new or whether they've been there for 25 years. So there's a reason why we need to study the Finlands and the Singapores and the Canadas. And it's not just because they're, they have high scores. It's about an attitude toward the teaching profession itself. And when you can get to that, 
which is to actually trust the people who you want to change, people will be far more likely to engage in all kinds of hard work despite the difficulties of doing this even while you're teaching full time. And that's, I think, what we've seen in Canada. That's what you see in Finland uh, and Singapore, is that you get an excited um, teacher group uh, wanting to learn more, wanting to work with other people, wanting to go public with their teaching instead of hiding and being by themselves. And I think a lot of the ideas are hatched right in the United States. And they are grabbed and used in countries outside of our own country.